So first, let's talk about the US only step one pattern. And this is what I mean by this is basically how are the quotients on step one, right? So the quotients on step one, they require multi-level thinking and reasoning. And most of the quotients are not straightforward. They are not straightforward at all. They're, they require lots of thinking. And so a, a typical question on step one isn't like, okay, a patient uh, isn't like, okay, so you have MI, what is the pathophysiology of MI? That is not how step one works. Step one will give you something called a clinical vignette of a patient presenting with the symptoms of MI and they would not tell you that it's MI. They will just give the presentation of MI like chest pain, diaphoresis, nausea, and you have to figure out it's MI and then they'll ask you the path of MI. What hap What is the pathophysiology of MI? And it'll be in the question and you need to pick up the answer. So it's like, it'll, it's a lot more complex than just, you know, simple tests. And so there's, there's mostly no first order questions and you need deep and strong concepts to solve most of the questions. And so the two main abilities, I think you need to score a 260 plus or a 270 plus score is basically ability to do a differential diagnosis. So what a differential diagnosis is basically, you know, a patient presents with symptoms like jaundice, uh, hepatomegaly and fever. Fever. What can this patient really have now out of this is basically it can be hepatitis, hep A, Hep B, that is acute one or acute Hep C, it can be malaria, it can be babesia and so many. So you, so what are differential diagnosis is you look at the symptoms and what could the causes be? It could be hepatitis A, it could be acute hepatitis B, it could be acute hepatitis C, it could be malaria or babesia. And then you use something called the elimination principle to, you know, so suppose you get a quotient and all of these would be the answer choices. And they'll ask you, what, what does this patient have? They'll give you the symptoms of the patient and they'll ask you what the patient has. And you need to use an elimination principle to, you know, eliminate certain choices and come to the answer. So first we'll take a tactical approach. We won't start like from the first line. How you, how I want you to solve questions is basically like this. Okay. First you want to identify something called a key. This is the key of the question. Then like just read to the key and like what it says, what does she have? Okay. What does she have there? And like, you know, they're asking me some kind of diagnosis. Second, Go to the answers. Third, go through the stem of the question. So this is the stem of the question, guys. This is called the question stem, right? So first, this is a first order question and I'll show you how it's a first order question. And you know, first let's go through the stem. Okay, a 14 year old. So first, like go and underline the 14 year old. Like let's circle that a 14 year old. What's her age? So she's a very young person of 14 year old is brought to the physician because she it's a she she has not yet her, had her first menstrual period so this might be something like primary amenorrhea she feels pain in her legs during sports in her school this might be cramping claudication She's at the 25th percentile for height. So she, her height is less and 60th percentile for weight. Her temperature is normal. Pulse is 70 per minute. BP is high. Examination shows a high arch palate, a low posterior hairline. The patient has a broad chest with widely spaced nipples. Pelvic examination shows normal external gelateria. There is scant pubic hair, important guys. So this patient has some kind of primary amenorrhea and, and if you can look through it, her height is less and she has some kind of cramping claudication and her BP is high and she has all these abnormalities plus she has scant pubic hair. The most probable diagnosis here is Turner syndrome guys. This is something called a first order quotient. So they give you a clinical vignette, right? They give you a clinical vignette and you just figure out the answer. That's Turner syndrome. This is something called first order because you did not have to think much through it. Now I'll show you and like, you know, what is the second order question? So guys, uh, this again is the key, read the key part of one of the process. 
and go through the answers. Note the question sem is the same as the previous question, the first order question, and I won't read through it again. So this patient like has a diagnosis of Turner syndrome. You have to make the diagnosis. Now, however, I do not see Turner syndrome in the answer choices. So this is not first order question, uh, first order question guys. This is a second order question. And what they are asking me is what happens in Turner syndrome, right? And from most of you who know the uh, answer, the answer is, I think, increased FSH. This is the answer. Why this is the answer is basically because in Turner syndrome, you have something called ovarian dysgenesis. And once you have ovarian dysgenesis, what happens is basically you have decreased estrogen. And what happens because of decreased estrogen, the negative feedback loop breaks and you have increased GnRH. And because of that, you have increased FSH and LH. And that's why that's the answer. Some of you might be thinking, why isn't decreased estrogen? Estrogen uh, and answer the reason for that is because estrogen is a pregnancy estrogen and that's not really handy here because it's not relevant here, right? So this is a second order question. First you have to make the diagnosis of Turner syndrome. Then you have to figure out, okay, what does she have? And so she had increased FSH. So that's a second order question. So now let's look at third order question, right? So we're increasing the difficulty of it. First look at the key. She's at risk of. This is the key. So they are asking some kind of adverse effect. Then they're asked, uh, then go through the answer choices. Look at it. And then read the stem of the question, guys. The stem again is the same as the first and second order questions. However, I've changed the key. So this again is Turner syndrome. The answer here is urinary tract infection. You would be like, Manik, how do I figure out it's urinary tract infection? Well, here's how you do it. First, you made a diagnosis of Turner syndrome. Then you have to think about what complications are there. And one complication is horseshoe kidney. Horseshoe kidney. And because of horseshoe kidney, you get increased chances of urinary tract infections. And so this was the third question. First, you had to know what the diagnosis was. Second, you had to know what the complication was. And then you had to know what, what the complication of the complication was. So the most common things you get on USMLE are second and third orders, guys. You would not get that many first order questions. Keep that in mind. And because of that, you need to have very deep concepts. As you saw through that, I, you have to know even the complication of complication. And that's that's like that makes for a tough exam. And because of that, you need very, very strong concepts.